Good evening, everyone, and welcome back to RTG TV. And it's uh, welcome back for me as well. I've been away for a few races now on the channel, uh, but we're back here in Belgium for the fifth round of the season, and we're at the halfway point. And what a track to be at at Spa. Francochon, the longest circuit on the F1 calendar. It's got two DRS zones. It's 4.349 miles in length, and it's pretty much exactly seven kilometers in length. We've got 22 laps to race around this circuit after this full qualifying session, which we're a few minutes into, and apologies for the late start. Pippa Kennedy leading the championship after last week's race. Still, but only just, on 80 points, followed by Chuck in second on 75. Tiny's on 75 points as well. Coix Gamer is on 73 points in fourth. Fifth place is Ginge. He's on 66 points, 113 points from Williams and the Constructors' Championship, leading that one. Ferrari in second on 94 and 89 points for the McLarens in third place. Once again, thank you for... Liam for joining me last week in the commentating box, but we've got the usual pairing of me and Lee. Lee, how are you doing? It's looking very, very tight at the top of that table. Yeah, it certainly is. Uh, looking forward to being here. Uh, of course, ended up uh, missing out last week. I think it was Brazil, I do uh, remember seeing. But unfortunately, I did uh, miss out on that one. wasn't able to attend. But of course, being here in... in uh, at the sunny Spa Francochamps track, brilliant track to be racing on here tonight. And we're seeing that some of the times already start to come in. We've seen Tiny actually on top in the intermediate championship right now, 146.974. We'll see, we've got Chuckle who's on an out lap right now. Often we look down Koyx, it's just the way it finishes lap, but I don't think it's going to be enough. Not 147.013. That's only in the intermediates, that is. Oh, Matt, going fastest with a 143.156. I'll be putting in quite a decent time there. Of course, this is only uh, Q1, so we're going to see how those times are going to be able to come down. And looking down the Looney Man, just starting his lap on the intermediates. We've got Prof just coming around the Blanchemont into the final chicane now see what time he's going to be able to put on the board as this will be his first lap just like most others that have uh, done it of course oh and he actually goes quickest to 142.917 nicely done from Prof so I'm pretty sure that he will be through judging by that time anyway that was a quick time from Prof wasn't it yeah if anyone's wondering, whilst watching the streaming, going, huh? We've got 20 cars, but I can't see car, uh, the one of the Red Bull cars, the car in 11th place, uh, doing the Intermediate Championship right now as well, or has done. That's Super Striker. We worked it out. Hopefully, when we go into Q2, EA's going to sort itself out on my end. Lee knows it's Super Striker. You can see it on his screen because he sees a different screen to me, or his individual <laughs> screen. But Super Striker, obviously Lee's partner, for the season so not mine yeah what are you on about <laughs> but yeah well, so... I, well actually that's it's you know, funny you should say that actually did you know today is quite a historical day actually did you know it's, what is it's 10 years since uh gay and se well same-sex marriage um was legalized actually 10 years ago I can't mm. believe it was only 10 years ago that that happened, but yeah, it's, that, so talking about partners and things, that's, that's an interesting one I heard on the radio this morning on the way to work. Chuck will now making his way uh, down the back straight into Blanchemont and down towards the bus stop chicane where you'll thread the needle into the right and left hander, the left hander clunkier and slower, especially in this generation of Formula One cars. Of course, of course, we've got Thursday's Intermediate Championship. Tiny won out last week. It's looking like he's going to be on top this week as well. Uh, we've got Paul Jones on an outlap, Lee. Are we going to, as, as stewards of Intermediate Championship, are we going to allow this lap? Because he's within the uh, now within 10 minutes of the end of qualifying. Are we going to allow I it? Will say, I, will, I will allow it because he did start at 
like just over it, so it was uh, with it being a, a longer track, so it's a bit of a leeway, I would say. But oh, we'll see how he's going to be able to do as he's heading down the, the camel straight into this right, left, right sh chicane section of uh, Lacombe. He actually manages to do it quite nicely there, being careful on the throttle. But yeah, there's one thing you've always got to make sure is getting back on the power with them tyres on a, well, on any track really, if it's wet or dry. Yeah, and apologies, haven't got the track map up yet, tap tap nor the race delta, or the lap delta, shall I say, uh, doing quite well in this middle sector. We've got some new news, Lee, which I didn't even know till today. Do you know what it is? In RTG, I mean. Um, that's no ha one have a little look at the Discord before giving your answer. I'll give you a chance. Tell me if you see something a little different. Uh, whilst Lee looks at that and finds out what the new news is, I don't know when it's going to happen, but Lee's about to find out what it is, uh, and then we'll, we'll announce it. Paul Jones makes his way around the final corner. Is he going to take top spot in the Inter Championship? No, he's not for round five. That's going to go to Tiny for the second week in a row, and I think his third top spot on the Intermediates. Do we know what it is, Lee? Uh, oh, reopening Wednesdays. Wednesdays coming back, baby. I never even realised that, to be honest. Yeah, I think Ging is leading that one. Uh, I took a guess. So, in our, in or well, it's not ours, but in R is in RCG's Discord. Um, the commentators, me and Lee, uh, mainly, uh, obviously we had Liam last week, might get him in the Discord as well, there's another backup. Um, we have a dedicated chat, if anyone who's listening later on, drivers, between us and the admins, in case we need to ask anything like that, and, you know, or, or send funny pictures of themselves. Um, anything like that. Uh, and I noticed that Ginge was in that chat. Now, as I said, it was usually admins, owners, and commentators, and Ginge was neither of those things, but now he is. He's one of the Wednesday admins. I don't know if he's a sole Wednesday admin or not, um, but the guys here do run their kind of own tiers. I think Aki's kind of... I feel like Aki's top of the tree. I'm not too sure. I'm not going to say he is or isn't. Uh, and then we've got Chuckle, who runs Mondays, Prof that runs today. And, and now it looks like Ginge is... is doing the other day we've got chuck as well but i think he kind of bounces between helping out on monday and oh helping out on mondays and thursdays is sticky panda who's racing for the Ooh. second week in a row one of the new drivers who lee didn't notice and he said he there is a new driver as he wasn't here last week so technically for lee it was a new one as ginge takes provisional fastest lap in q1 yeah but i did see uh Sticky Panda on Monday. Ah, okay. Fair enough. So that, that's how... So, yeah, but seeing Ginge just put an absolute stonker of a time there, 142.551. But I think he's going to have to go better to be able to go through it. It's, uh, it's going to be close. <laughs> we will try and see if we can get... Which is me basically now asking the if he could do it, if he wouldn't mind. Um, getting our poll time, I think from last season, Lee, but I wasn't there for whatever reason. And I can't remember. But I'm worried I'm thinking of a different league. But I don't think I am. Um, uh, I think you may be. Do you think I am? Maybe? I think I might be, yeah. Um, I went and well, definitely, and it seems definitely. To have been here for a bit. Well, the last time we were here then would have been. Um, is it this one that I found it on? Because I've got notes from a lot of different tiers and things. That's not nope. that. Bear with me a second. I will find it. I feel like, were we not there last <laughs> season? 
No, and maybe that was uh, somewhere else we were on, I think. But, uh, yeah. Well, the, the, okay, the benchmark that I've got <laughs> from my last notes was a 141. Point four four five. That was set in the Wednesday tier as season twelve. So we've been there once since because I've got notes on it and I can't. So it's either thirteen or fourteen that we've been here, uh, and I think I probably right, I thirteen. Yeah, I think if we weren't, uh, I think we actually didn't beat it the last time. But I'm unsure. Oh, it's sorry, just, Lee. I've forgotten. Bear with me a sec, guys. I'm just going to send Lee something. I've not been very slick today. Came back from holiday yesterday. I'm still feeling I've been to work today as well, and I'm feeling it. I'm not going to lie. The week, the, well, I can say the weekend, it was sort of a start of the week. It's catching up on me, shall we say. Uh, so, yeah, sorry, Lee. I forgot to send you that, which is what I'm about to look at. And I, will, I would have said this off stream. But I'm going to say it now. I've changed it slightly in the sense I've made it more compact, so hopefully it's easier to read. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, out in Q1 this season so far, we've had, obviously, quite a few of those. Intermediate championship-wise, so Tiny's now, uh, uh, looking at last week's results, and obviously adding it uh, after seeing this, is Tiny now goes fastest with a 42.338. The Chinese taking three intermediate fastest laps and is leading that championship right now. Uh, Koitz Gamer has took the only other uh, spot on that list. Uh, out in Q1 so far this season, GT Ord's been out in Q1 every time this season so far. It, uh, before we get to the midpoint of the season, is he eventually going to get himself out of Q3, uh, Q1? Sorry. Time will tell. Got a few minutes on the clock and he is out on an outlap. We were just looking at his teammate, Koix Gamer, who's up in second, who has had a dramatically different start to his season compared to GT Ord. Uh, Pern Bowden got himself into Q2 a couple of times this season so far. Miami being one, and that was the first race. Uh, Dario, who I'm not too sure, who is here today, sorry. Uh, Dario has got himself out of Q2 won once this season uh, but always been outside the top 10 never got himself into Q3 we've got Chuckle down as well as Paul Jones which is not something you're used to seeing those two being right down there Paul Jones being in the McLaren uh, replacing Matthew for this evening and I think Stephen Jones may have taken a new seat in the house or taken his seat in the house uh, with that opening, as I think Kez is, has left us, I believe. Just remember the Red Bull that is missing on his screen is Super Striker, who is just about to start his final lap. But crucially, Lee, GT Ord, is he going to get himself into Q2 for the first time this season? Well, judging by the times that are out there right now, I'd say he's going to have to make up about a second and a half, I would say. Because we've got Paul Jones, Chuckle uh, on a lap, Sticky Panda also, and they've all set their times on the intermediates, so it's quite a way off. Um, as for Per and Bowden, he's, I would say he's most likely going to be starting at the back of the grid, because, well, we know these guys are actually quite quick. All they need to do is just keep it steady and not make a mistake. As we see, Sticky Panda goes for the 142.496. So then that puts Super Striker on the cusp of being eliminated. So, the two Aston Martins looking pretty good right now. One of the McLarens is out on his final attempt. What I'll do is, because I forgot to do it, unfortunately you don't have it. We'll talk about it another time actually about this app I've got. And you, you, know, you should get it really, because it's, it's so useful so so useful because you actually see true purple sector times like green and purple oh it doesn't lie to you the oh, only the, issue the, is the telemetry it, thing yeah the only issue is a lot of the guys have turned their telemetry off and being public so their name is not on there anymore right. however however a lot of them still do 
and I've said from now on, as long as one of the teammates has it on, then you've got them both. You know what I mean? I can work it. We can work it out. The one that mm -hmm. says player, you can because that's what it says. But the other thing you can do, if you if you know, which I have done last week when we were in, uh, uh, sorry, you went here. But when we were in Q1, Q2 and stuff, I actually manually changed people's names whilst we were going along. Um, oh. And just been able to do it every time I didn't speak. So it's a bit of a pain, but it only takes about five minutes of the time. And it makes life that little bit easier. But I'm just trying to get it up. It's not working at the moment. Um, let's hopefully I'll get it working. But uh, yeah, we'll talk about it. There is a monthly fee. But when I say there's a monthly fee, it's one ninety nine. So it's not that bad. Not bad. Anyway, uh, sorry, gone well off course here. And we've got our bottom five. GT Ord is out, out for the fifth time this season. He actually hasn't finished a race this season. So I wonder after this long wait he's going to have, whether he can finish and see the chequered flag after 22 laps. Fern Bowden will be starting on uh, 20th and last place. Taylor McKenzie is out in Q1 as well. Apologies for this. We were talking about such random things and should have really been more on the ball. But he's out in Q1 for the first time this season. Yep, so there we go. That is the end of qualifying. And the results are as follows. And the top 15 will be moving on to the next stage of qualifying. We've got Tiny who got the fastest lap of 142.338. And then just behind was Koyx, 27 behind him in second. Then there was Purple Kennedy, Sticky Panda, Super Striker, Ginge in sixth. Seventh was Paul Jones, then it was Lee, Chuckle, Looney Man in tenth, Prof was eleventh, then it was Chuck in twelfth, Matt in thirteenth, fourteenth was Royal Rumble, and Danny was in fifteenth. So they will be all moving on to the next stage of qualifying. The folks who will not be moving on are Dario, Stephen Jones, Taylor McKenzie, GT Orda and Pern Bowden. And they'll be all starting in the respective positions of 16th, 17th, 18th, 19th and 20th. So now moving on to a 15 minute session where the 15 drivers will fight it out to get into that Q3. Chin. So, unfortunately, Super Striker is still missing off our screens, and I think that might be oh God. the case for the entirety. Hopefully not, but it, it, it may it may be the case. Uh, anyway, we've got drivers already coming out. Uh, we do seem to see that quite quickly, don't we, here at Spa, because it's the longest circuit, it's the longest lap time, and the longest out lap. Uh, so there isn't really time to chill here, especially in Q3. It really is sort of get in, uh, sorry, get out, get the lap done, get back in, get some new tyres on. Uh, obviously, they're actually in the game. There isn't any time penalty for refueling, which I think there should be, to be honest. Uh, but there isn't any of that. Uh, it's just the literally few seconds of manually changing the tyres on the screen. You can see in the garage and they're pushing in and driving out. Uh, but you're sort of in the garage for around some sort of pit lane line to line, including going into the garage. It's about a minute, isn't it, really? Maybe a minute and 20 at most. Something like that, yeah. Um, so it's not too long, but yeah, you've really got to get on with it when you go around here. Sorry if anyone could hear my Siri there. Somehow it decided that I'd said it, which I haven't. Um, um, welcome everyone who's joining the stream. Uh, I would like to know people's comments. Uh, I wonder if John's here. Maybe not because Matthew's not racing, but maybe it is. But anyone who's regulars that watch kind of week in, week out, I've changed broadband provider. The speed isn't as good It's because I work for the company, so I get discount for it. Uh, but I want to see if the speeds... Uh, sorry, if, if it's good enough to be streaming. So if you think the quality is as good as it usually was, maybe better, because actually doing some research, it could potentially be better this way um, or worse. So if anyone's watching you regularly watches, please let me know in the comments. Obviously, I'll watch the stream back afterwards and see if it sort of looks any better or not. Um, but hopefully it does. I do stream in 720 
um, frames per second. Uh, sorry, no, that's not right. 720p. Um, uh, I would like to go up to 180, but I felt like even Virgin with the higher speeds, it really couldn't manage the 1080. So we haven't tried that today. It's still on 720, but I kind of want to get it to that point. Um, I don't know why there isn't an option now with PS5 that you can't stream in 4K, but maybe it depends on the game. Yeah, I mean, uh, look, looking at it right now, it is seeming to be quite clear anyway, so... Does it seem better? Yeah, Perm, as you're watching, does it seem any better? Same and same to you, Lee, or worse? Or does it seem a bit better? Seems same, really. Okay. Because when I'm watching it physically now on the screen and I look back, it never looks as good. No, no. It never oh. will. But, it's not even, but like, I, I uh, feel like it's not even close, like though. Yeah, but you've not got NASA internet, so... I mean, true. And, and the other thing is, if anyone... Maybe I shouldn't say this publicly. No, I won't. I changed my mind. I'm not saying it. Oh, hold on. Did you read what I've heard bust through? Um, well, you know, you've been to my house. Do you, do you not remember what's right next to my house? Oh yeah. Wait, is that there again? Um, I I. Like, we have to be cryptic, so I have no idea. Message me if you want. Perm's just sent some messages, but it's just gone off the screen very quickly as Looney Man sets the fastest lap. Tiny then follows suit after him. Uh, we'll start actually talking about what's going on in front of us rather than some gobbledygook about internet, I do promise you, as Paul Jones goes faster again at 42.646. But before that, could you see what Perm Bowden says? Are you seeing what Perm Bowden said? Uh, I don't know the chop. The Bugatti, uh, what does that mean? Sorry, yeah. what does that mean? I can say that because that's got nothing what I was on about. All oh, right, well, it wasn't that then. Was it, the was it that? Or? Oh, no, I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about a building, a very important building that's within a quarter of a mile of my house. Bro, I had no idea. I completely forgot. Right, here you go. <laughs> right. But so seen this, the times plate, coming. this plate, sorry, this place that I'm sending you is the reason why it's not very good, actually. The internet. There you go. Anyway, carry on. Yeah, so. Oh, yeah, fair. Um, <laughs> but we've seen Papa Kendi bring in the fastest time up to now 142.103. That's actually almost half a second quicker than what Koyak's uh, managed to do just not long before it. We've got Lee just coming to the line, finishing his time. 142.838. So we're only waiting on Prof and Danny. Unsure what's happening with Danny up to now. He's yet to leave the garage. Oh, and Sticky Panda, where's that? He's just crashed. S Sticky Panda crashed. Oh. Just down there. Wait. Sorry, I was on mute then. Yeah, I didn't see where he crashed, actually. His props going was... slowly. He's invalidated his lap time. It was just after. Uh, at the start of sector three there that you crashed i mean if you go to gingerly there's getting out of the way and then there's what ginger's doing that's i have no idea what's happening he's lucky that the tires aren't really realistic because <laughs> they were really realistic I, that it would be pretty undrivable even though he's only doing literally 30 miles an hour. Yeah, I think he un underfueled grossly there. And do, you, do you think that's what it was, or do you think he was just getting off the track? 
Because that no, was my I, first I could, instinct, to be honest. I could see his uh, red indicator and there was yellow flags because he was going slow uh, due to fuel. Right. Uh, so, yeah, he's probably just went and put in the, the five kilos and just ran out coming into the final uh, half of the track, really. I'm unsure is Looney Man on a lot. No, he isn't. No. He's coming into the box. Prof actually came in as well. I think he invalidated his lap too. So. Uh, who's Tiny. coming out there? I can say Tiny's out on an outlap, but there's a few drivers. There's a Red Bull as well, who's coming out on the track. That Super Striker, the the man with no name for this evening. One well, no, good, he's going to go around no name corner, and Chuck will <laughs> make something his... was coming up. <laughs> I, I, you know, I'm not, I'm not a dad yet, but I've got all the dad jokes sorted already. Uh, yeah, yeah learning super... from your dad. <laughs> huh? <laughs> You're learning from your dad. <laughs> Oh yeah, there's there's no one better than there's no one better than Richard, tricky dicky. Yeah, um, <laughs> yeah we've got some more cars coming out. The Aston Martin as well. As I said, I'm still not fully with it from from the last few days. Um, yeah, I've had... Odd occasion. <laughs> But apart from that, no, not really. Uh, Royal Rumble, he's out of the garage as well. It's getting quite busy. We've still got a bit of time left to go, uh, but time is scarce here at Spa with how big the circuit is or how long the circuit is. Um, but they've come out, Lee. I don't know about you, but especially drivers like Royal Rumble and Prof come out at a very strange time and I think they've forgotten that they're at the longest circuit on the F1 calendar maybe do I mean, mean I do, I'm not sure if they've got enough time well that's the thing it does give them a chance to say they do mess up their lap and then it gives them a chance to get back in get a fresh set on and then just get back out again so it does give you that sort of a little bit of leeway I would say but other than that, it's it's not really going to help you much because, well, if you leave it to the last minute, really, and get it in and basically take the chequered flag as you finish your lap, then you're not going to have to worry about the fuel. So you'll be that little bit lighter and therefore a little bit more quicker. Whereas Tiny right now, he's going to have to be worrying about the fuel as he's going to be coming back uh, to the pits again he's going to be having to carry an extra lap somewhere but up to now it doesn't seem to be bothering him as it looks like he's just putting a purple sector to it joe could correct me if that is uh, not the case and i haven't that's... actually got the app out because it wasn't working properly i'll see if it's working now actually because i've given it 10 minutes so i will tell you if it has or not oh actually seems like it might be working bear with me a sec Oh, well, Tiny coming into the final corner and now to the line, a 41.935, first one into the 141s, smashing time there from the Ferrari. And I think that's going to cement his place into the next qualifying session. And I will say this, he was quickest on the intermediates and now he's quickest in Q1 and Q2 up to now. Is he going to make this a trend and get the pole position here? Seems to be the, uh, is quite a favourite track of his. Prof now on a lap. Just coming through sector two now. Um, Chuckles up ahead of him though, and yeah, the app's still playing up, so it may not be able to use it today. Unfortunately, I'm trying to see if I can use a different way of doing it. Uh, but until yep. then, Ooh. we'll have to stick with the old-fashioned ways. Chuckle comes to the line with a 142.2, getting close to those 141s, but we've only seen one driver do that 
so far and obviously he's in first place. Prof now making his way into the final two corners, which of course is the famous bus stop, which was reprofiled uh, getting close to 20 years ago now. I can't believe I'm saying that. As Prof makes his way to the line, it's eighth. Yeah, I think it was changed in 05 or 06, so it's either 18 or 19 years ago. Jeez. I feel old. Yeah, I'm really starting to get to that point now in my uh, <laughs> 30th year. Um, it reminds me of this video I ended up seeing about kids nowadays calling like Blink 182, like classic rock and everything. Like, uh, <laughs> Yeah, that is a but, bit odd. Would you just bear with me one yeah. second, mate? <laughs> yep, no worries. So, we've only got one person yet to set a time, and that is Danny. He's just coming around at the Blanchemont now. Ginge Throat, Ginge Throat, he's on a lap now. He's sitting in the drop zone in 14th. Is he going to be able to put in a good enough time? He's previous time is 143.511 now he's just going through Lacombe now Danny's actually retired from the session so Danny's not going to get in a time in that's a bit unfortunate there so he's going to be starting in P15 Jen's just coming round to poo on now Absolutely nailing that there. Now coming up to this right, left, and then down here to the end of sector two now. And he's actually up on his time by near enough a second. Which at this moment could put him into P4 even. But I suspect he's got some time still left in him. As now he's coming into the final chicane now. And he does keep it to the right hand side for the final corner. And to the line he goes 142.354. So there we go, into fourth, just like I suspected. Very good lap from Ginge there as we wait to see Looney Man make his way to the line next as he rounds the final corner and to the line goes into the top 10 for the moment with a 142.6 as he lifts off the throttle and reminisces on that final attempt as he just got through before the chequered flag. Paul Jones going fast is here, he's reserving in that McLaren this evening. And who have we got left? We've got Chuck. He needs to get himself through. Looney Man as well. He's on the... Uh, obviously, he's finished his lap and now has to wait to see if he's safe. His teammate is looking like he could be in a spot of bother now. As we go around the final corner with Chuck, he goes up to seventh, knocks Prof out of the top ten. And that means that he's out in Q2 for the second time this season before now he'd raced in three of the four races and he'd been in every single session and in one of the three races and now it's a double q2 finish for him as mass f1 now rounding blanchemont and up to the bus stop chicane gets onto the brakes around 100 meters before the apex into the right into the left pedal to the metal get your head down to the line and he just Ooh. misses out on Q3 by a tenth and a, tenth. a yeah a tenth and a quarter, something like that. Very, very close to that. And yeah, that's the end of his qualifying. He's got around a 20 minute, uh, 20, 15 to 20 minute wait until we get going for the race. As Looney Man wipes the sweat off his brow because he's just made it through to Q3. Three. Yep, nice one there. Just one just to make it through by the skin of his teeth there, of course. Uh, <coughs> Super Striker just been right close there, uh, just ahead of Looney Man.
and I think we're going to end up running out of time unless he get, gets to the line. Uh, I, no, I think he'll get to the line. He's going in the pits. So yeah, you're right. We might actually hit the clock before the leading man gets we're gonna the garage. We're going to hit the clock. We're going to watch us. When they start wheeling them in, that's when it's... Yeah, you're right. We are going to get to the clock because uh, we're at the longest circuit and Looney Man crossed the line to finish his final lap, which did get him through that 42.678 uh, just before the chequered flag came out over the circuit. And I think it was around one or two seconds after he crossed the line, the chequered flag came out. As so there we go, down to zero. The timer uh, runs out and we're at the end of this Q2 session. Yep, so there were 15 and now it will be going down to 10. There's Paul Jones there getting the fastest lap there, 141.931. And then Tiny was just behind that uh, by three thousandths of a second there. Well, sorry, Paul Jones actually put in that, the time last, so he just went ahead by a little bit. So Tiny in two and second. Purple Kendi in third, Chuckle was fourth, fifth was Lee, Ginge in sixth, seventh was Chuck, and eighth was quite a game or Super Striker and Looney Man. They will all be moving on to the next stage of qualifying battle now for that pole position and that extra point. Matt, Prof, Royal Rumble, Sticky Panda and Danny will not be carrying on and then they will be starting in their respective places of 11th, 12th, 13th, 14th and 15th. Now moving on to the third and final qualifying session where these top 10 drivers will battle it out in this 12 minute session for that pole position, the closest grid spot to the first corner and who will be getting that extra point. Uh, so, Lee, quick question before any drivers come out. Um, the the pictures I sent for anyone for context was the stats for this week. Do you think they're a little bit clearer because I made the boxes a bit smaller? Is that a bit easier? Yeah, yeah I thought mm -hmm. it would be. Yeah, and the other little tip for you, if you're looking at a specific one, you don't know whether it's inside, outside top 10 stat or the qualifying outs or ins. The qualifying outs and ins are smaller boxes to the outside top 10 and inside top 10. So that's yep. the way you can indicate looking down. So just, just in case you didn't know that already. I'm sure you probably did. Uh, Tiny now making his way out. As I said, I haven't got the app working, so we're not going to know true times. Um, unfortunately, it's a little bit of a temperamental app, but it's worked for the last few weeks. Um, but now having a, a bit of a funny moment. Uh, so... So, Tiny first, Pippo Kennedy second, Paul Jones is going, well, he was going to be third, it's actually these guys are very close together as Paul now backs off and, and lets the other two do their own thing. Uh, those two being uh, Lee and, as I said, Pippo Kennedy. And then we've got a bit of a wait. It's going to be Coit's Gamer after that. A bit of a train of cars following him as well. Uh, that being Super Striker, the man with no name, and the McLaren. Oh, sorry, the McLaren, the Mercedes of Chuckle behind him as well. So makes it a bit easier for me and Lee. And we've got two groups of three and a couple of solos. Uh, the other one just coming out of the pits being Chuck, the driver second in the championship at the moment and on the hunt for Pippa Kennedy, our reigning. Thursday champion tier two now GP two champion, but yeah, going back to that, those standings, Lee, so close between the top four, seven points. It's only um, fourteen points between the top five. I'm not a problem. Look at them. I have to actually check. They've been very terrible. Perhaps. So, yeah, we both were today. Yeah, go and save it quickly. We'll have a look. But uh, before we get these laps going, well, we've just got the first one going tiny, so we'll ride with him. Uh, but yeah, uh, 80 points for first, just to refresh. Then second and third on 75 points each, 73 points for fourth. And then, as I said, the end of that top five is 
Ginge on 66 points, but it's still only 14 points and only 15 points between the top six. Chuckle still well within that fight as well. So by the looks of things at the moment, Lee, we could potentially have a six-way fight for the championship. Yeah, quite It's possibly. realistically close enough for us to say that. We're in round five of ten, and there's 15 points between the top six. It could swing either way for any of them in the next, uh, including this one, the next six races. I actually forgot that it was, uh, never even realised that we're basically almost at the halfway point now after we've gone with this race now. Well, noticing with the views as well, GP2, even though it's supposedly the second tier or so-called the second tier, uh, actually, in view-wise, it's, it's been more popular than GP1. And, and I actually, in terms of racing, nothing to take away from GP1. Um, I have, honestly, honest opinion, I have slightly preferred GP2 this season, just with how close. Don't get me wrong, Josh McGill is doing so well. I know it was your first proper race on Monday. Uh, I haven't honestly checked. Can you remember who won on Monday? Uh, Josh? Was it Josh McGill, Ver uh, McGill Verstappen by any chance? Uh, it was, uh, yeah. Close with Prodigy by any chance? No, I don't think so. I'm unsure. I can't remember. It's been kind of a bore recently. Just all the comms just... Yeah, they do the start to merge into one. I mean, I'm a bit blurred for other reasons. Um, as people go as he goes fastest with a 141.751. I'm not going to talk specifically what I did, but most of you will get what I did. I went to Amsterdam on my holiday, and uh, yeah, that was a bit of a haze, <clears throat> quote unquote. Uh, so yeah, when I say I'm a bit worse for wear, that, that could be the reason why, maybe. Uh, so the top four now already set their, I say top four, four have set their lap times, uh, two Red Bulls and McLaren and an Aston Martin. I've got no idea why Lee's laughing. It's not a laughing matter whatsoever. As we wait for the next car to, to come to the line, Ginge being the next one. He's in eighth. Where is it going to put him? Fourth. And it goes Aston Martin, McLaren, Red Bull, McLaren, Red Bull as it stands. And then we get a little Williams of Chuck slotting into that second place and splitting the Aston Martin and McLaren of Pippo Kennedy and Paul Jones. And just to remind uh, you guys and remind myself, because I forget so often, uh, Paul Jones is one of the reserves this evening. I'm fully going to write it down now because otherwise I will genuinely forget again uh, as... Uh, we're finishing this Q2, Q2, Q3 session. I do that every week as well. Yeah, you kind of, kind of do have a bit of a habit of that sometimes. I, I um, do, yeah. So it's always in Q3 I say Q2. It's like a thing now. It's just a thing. Yeah. Uh, and Coit's game are going very slowly. He's certainly not on a hot lap whatsoever. Must have made a mistake, Lee, because he hasn't invalidated nor by the looks of things he's got any damage so must have as i said got a bit of a slide on or something and just lost so much lap time he thought there was no point i think that could be the only reason um maybe i'm unsure about that but you know what i was just thinking there right you know how we were on about it just a couple of weeks ago how this i think it was a couple of weeks ago we were on about how this qualifying format isn't really the best nowadays. Is it yourself who's speaking to about that? Probably. But we talked so yeah. much about Formula One it that all blurs into one for sure. His true, his tiny true. starts his first lap. Um what do you mean though? Refresh me quickly. Well I was just thinking there how I was remembering about the F one Academy and how they do qualifying. And it was actually really interesting. So it was like uh, you would do as many laps as you can in like a, in like a thirty-minute session or something, and it would be your fastest lap would be like your grid determine your grid position for like the the main race. I think it was, 
And your second fastest lap determines your position for the sprint. That was like, that's actually like, quite I an like, interesting I, way. I like that, but obviously that would only work for sprint races. But I do mm. also still like the knockout, so... It's, yeah. I, I can't, I don't think they should fiddle with the format too much now, because they've done a lot of fiddling with it in the last three years. I know, I know it's only sprints that they've been changing. Um, knockout. <laughs> the elimination one. Oh, yeah, that was a little while ago now. That was like 2016, 15 or 16, because it was definitely that Something like smaller like that. generation. I remember it was a smaller generation, but I can't remember if it was well, one or race. No. No, no, no. It was two races. Was it two races? It was two oh. races, yeah. And then they got rid of it. But I suppose yeah, that's the right thing to do best anyway. Best. Um, you, you never want to do something once because, you know, you can never decide if it was good enough. Just like these True. guys here, actually, they usually do two laps. They do their first banker, and then they they have a, a benchmark for themselves actually in terms of delta, which I think actually makes all the difference sometimes. Knowing that you have a delta, you have that benchmark, and knowing when you're going around the lap that you're in, looking in the top right corner, well, you can change where it is, but the standard, it's the top right corner like we have on our screen. Uh, you see it with the green tab up. You don't know what the time is. You can't concentrate on the numbers. Uh, I can't anyway, because my eyesight is terrible. Um, but um, you can't concentrate, I don't know about you, Lee, but you can't concentrate on the number. If you know it's green, it's on. And same with the red, I suppose. You give it you give it that little bit more, but when you don't have a doubt, if you don't get that first lap in, it, it feels that little bit more uncertain, I find. See, I, I do get what you're saying, but see, when, when, I'm, when I was driving anyway, uh, it was, I just went and I've had a chance, like, on a s small straight or that, I would just quickly glance up, see where it is at. But sometimes, knowing whether you're green or red, it puts the nerves into you. I would say at some points because you're able to reflect back in the moments of what happened in your previous lap. No, I'm saying you've got that sort of. Uh, like nervousness is, is it going to happen again like if I put a bit too much throttle on am I going to get a slip of traction or something you know yeah 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 um, so, uh, guys that are watching I know there's some drivers from Q1 and Q2 who will watch the last part on the stream um, put your thoughts in what do you think not having that lap time that, that benchmark to, to go off as Lee says to get the nerves going uh, or like me, maybe you think put it more into a, you know, I'm going to try and go get it, um, or just sort of just going for it and, and hoping for the best and not knowing, uh, you know, or not having a benchmark and knowing it's your one and only. Um, yeah. Put your comments yeah, down. I mean, what do you prefer to do? I mean, I would say just uh, just focus on the road ahead of you. That's, that's what I'd just try and do. Don't look at the... The, the thing up in, in the top right of your screen, just keep looking forward and focus on everything of what you're doing around you and then, then look. So, back to what, back what, to what we're here for anyway, mm -hmm. actually focusing on what these guys are doing and Pippa Kennedy's going to be the first driver to finish a lap. Uh, he is making his way through the middle part of the lap. Sorry, I was just double checking who were the reserves again. Just Paul, was it? I think it is just Paul. I think we did have 19 full time in the end. And Paul Jones is the only one who is reserving. So the checkered flag is now out. We've got every driver out on the track setting a lap. Obviously, this being the longest lap of the season. The only man that isn't setting a lap, sorry, is Looney Man. He's in the pits. He's retired early for whatever reason as Pippa Kennedy comes through the bus stop chicane, makes his way around the final corner. Ooh. He goes onto provisional pole 
by an even more of a margin than he had previously. He's taken two of the four poles so far this season. Is it going to be another one as Ginge gets himself onto the front row and into the top three? He's done that once this season so far as well. Chuck goes on to the front row as well. He's a couple of tenths back from Pippo Kennedy. His uh, super striker sets his final lap and goes fifth fastest. His teammate Lee is the next car up and he goes fifth fastest and pips his teammate as we now wait for Chuckle to cross the line and he goes seventh fastest. We've got two more to go. Koik's Gamer and Tiny. Koix has been on pole once. Tiny hasn't just yet. Koix goes on to provisional pole, but is Tiny going to get his first pole of the season? He isn't. He isn't even going to set a lap. He invalidated his final attempt, and Koix Gamer is on pole for the second time this season and qualified in the top three every race so far. That is actually a, a little bit of a a surprising one actually I was actually thinking that judging by Q1 and Q2 that Tiny was going to get it there but unfortunately he messed up his lap and uh, didn't manage to get a time in unfortunately so he'll be starting down in 10th he certainly will and we didn't mention it at all actually and I'll just mention it right at the very end the pole time a 141.461 the benchmark I had from season 12 set by Matthew is a 141.445. So we didn't beat it, but we were so, so close. Oof. That is uh, just a small margin. We would say something else in Scotland. Um, <laughs> but uh, Koyx Gamer there getting the fastest lap of 141.461. And he'll receive that extra point for getting the pole position and he'll be starting the closest to turn one. Pippo Kennedy will be lining up next to him in second place. Behind him will be Chuck and Ginge in third and fourth. Fifth is Paul Jones. Behind him is Lee in sixth. Then you've got Super Striker and Chuckle on row four and then it'll be Looney Man and Tiny in ninth and tenth. So now we're going to be moving on to the race where we're going to be having 22 laps of racing around this 7 kilometer track. So, like I said, with, with Pippo not getting many points last week, he's certainly let that gap close in. We didn't check the weather, Lee. We need to check it now because it's a wet start to proceedings. Uh, we, obviously, we have the, the weather, uh, the, as I said, we've not been on our full game, so I do apologise for that. Uh, is it full wet or is it not? I think it's half-half. I'll go and check the rest director what that says, intermediates, unfortunately. Oh, I was hoping we'd see some a little bit of blue on the side of these cars. Um, have you actually checked the weather? Because obviously we can check that. I think it's going to be going dry. Interesting. So, a intermediate <laughs> start, a wet start. Go for it. You're laughing. What's happening? Oh, just uh, Paul Jones putting a comment there saying that's what happens when you leave your brake bias on 70%. <laughs> so, he messed up his lap completely on uh, his, his final lap there. Uh, it's going to go dry at one point. About halfway through no. or a bit later than that? Uh, unknown. Unknown. Probably about halfway. Okay, okay. So, an intermediate start for everyone. We've got Coit Schemer on pole position. Pippo Kennedy alongside him. These are two of the drivers who are in that championship fight. Uh, we've seen these guys race wheel to wheel before. Chuck as well, he's in it. Just to remind you, Tiny, uh, Ginge, Chuckle, they're all in with a shout as we go into the fifth race of ten. And we can really start to say that all of these guys have got a chance of being in uh, in the uh, fight for the title. Chuck and Tiny are both on 75 points as well. So we'll see who comes out on top when we go to the next race in Spain. 
the Barcelona circuit. So we should be getting underway in just a few seconds. Of course, just to remind you, no formation lap as per usual in F123. And we're probably never going to see it really in F123 at all. We'll see if we see it when we go into the summer on F124. I think I seen it last night in uh, Burnt Rubber. Uh, yeah, I was thinking of R RTG, is all. Uh, yeah, in RTG, yeah. And to be honest, it's one of them temperamental things. It's, uh, yeah, not the best, I would say. But right. regardless. <laughs> Here we go, three, four, and five red lights. It's a wet start here in Belgium, and Koitz Gamer gets away rather well there and goes defensive towards turn one. We're seeing drivers almost going four wide into the first corner, into the background as Pippa Kennedy gets squeezed out wide there, but gains the place back on the traction on exit as Chuck now gets back into third as well. As we go up to the mighty Rouge and Radion up the hill, not flat through here whatsoever Ooh. in these cases conditions as Stephen Jones oh. is around at the back there and I think he's collected a couple of cars with him as well Super Striker being one of them again the man with no name is Lee overtakes GT Ord he's already up to 16th after starting 19th and on that back row Pern Bowden's moved up a couple of places as well as now GT Ord now down at the back that was a real commentator's curse unfortunately and we now are into the second sector of this first lap here at Spa. Yep, but I've just seen an absolutely cracking move from uh, Royal Rumble. They were battling uh, with Prof, and uh, they were actually side by side going up, uh, going down the region and up into Radion. And he managed to actually get the overtake done, and he's up three places now. So he's doing it actually quite nice there. Although the biggest gainer up to now is Dario with, Sticky, uh, with 7 and Sticky Panda up 6 places. So they two managed to do quite nicely their biggest gainers on this opening lap. But looking around, seeing Danny and Mark going side by side as they're coming up to the Blanchemont now. And Danny's managed to get that 11th position there from Matt and uh, Alpine there. Nicely done there. Moving further up, Chuckle could be looking like he's going to go for a move on Ginger. Is he going to get the traction? No, he doesn't. It looked like he had a line that he could have went, but unfortunately he didn't manage to get the traction that he needed Super Striker into the pits. And Ginge there goes wide out of oh, oh, the contact. sources. Five second penalty for Royal Rumble after he comes together uh, with... Uh, I'm not sure who, Dario, maybe, uh, and some yep, others Dario's like that, and Super Striker is into the pits as Paul Jones gets past. Now, if you were to slide Paul Jones out of proceedings here and, and thought the uh, top seven were actually top six, the top six are the top six drivers in the championship, and they're certainly taking a grasp and a hold of this season 15 and and really already apart from sticky panda in the aston martin uh, starting to really pull away in the championship compared to others and quick gamer though looking very comfortable within one and a half laps he's gained two seconds on the next car yeah but he's actually managed to pull quite a nice gap um i will say i'm on I'm not sure if it'll be shown up on stream or not, but sometimes your voice drops just that little bit. Well, I'm talking about that, Taylor McKenzie looked like he was lagging a little as he was coming out to pull on. But yeah, oh, so okay. unsure if that's going to be your internet or not. Okay. Bow. Oh, we've got Lee here. Looked like he was going to remove on Taylor. He could be eyeing it up coming into the bus stop chicane, is he? No, he's not. He's going to be waiting nice and patient as we move on to lap three. Oh, Paul Jones making a move on Chuck there. And now Paul Jones is up into second place. 
GT Orton perm board in there with the data were bowing out there and GT Orton actually spun around at the final corner there. Are you still there? I am, yeah. Sorry, I was just trying to sort something out potentially with the Wi Fi. Ah, While I was no doing worries. this, trying to multitask as a man, which is which is difficult. Coit's gamer though, not having difficulties on this circuit in these conditions. Three and a half seconds. Lee. Now his his lead is Lee getting past Taylor McKenzie, uh, already having himself a time penalty though, and it's three seconds, and that probably will be for corner cutting, uh, but up to thirteenth, and we'll see if he can improve from there uh, Royal Rumble obviously having that five second penalty for causing a collision with another driver I, I'm sure Lee will be able to tell us who that is actually if he looks at the potentially if you could look at the race director race director at some point uh, I just couldn't Whoa. catch Royal Rumble as GT Ord fighting oh. with Perm Bowden and he's got past oh yeah that was his collision with Dario on lap two ah okay that's what that five second penalty was for with the uh, Royal Rumble. Oh, Chuckle. Oh, looked like he was. Did he just get overtaken by Pipple? I'm sure, but right now, Chuckle fighting to get that fourth position. No, he will break himself and he's actually lost in that position. Is he possibly? Is Ginger gonna. No, he's not gonna be able to make a. Take up that opportunity. Koyak's still absolutely smashing it here. And he's four seconds up the road now. Yeah, certainly putting in a, a good stint so far. But as we know, it's going to dry up at some point. And I actually already feel like, Lee, the clouds are going from more of a dark grey to a light grey. Yeah, I'm a bit unsure about that at the moment. We'll see in the coming laps. Oh, look but... how close Tiny's getting there. He thought about it. He moved to the right. He was within a tenth of him, but I don't think had the straight line speed. DRS, of course, not oh, enabled in man. these conditions. Going actually, half off the track there, going down the Camel straight. He moved to the left-hand side, and he was half on the track, half off it on that grass, and he actually managed to get that move done. On Matt, nicely done there from Looney Man. Very, very good move there from Looney Man. It didn't catch all of it, unfortunately, but what I did see, or what everyone else saw as well, and it, was a, it was a good move. Uh, lean out after getting past Taylor McKenzie. Right on the back of Prof. And of course, having the five second penalty, it, it's not great, but the upside to it is you can get rid of it. Um, the three second time penalties, the three of the drivers have got Chuck, Lee and Dario are, uh, are, are not able to be served in the pit lane. And uh, only served once the checker flag falls. So, in some ways, I, I don't know about you, Lee, it's actually arguably better to get a five second. Yeah, I'd say that. Because if it's a safety car, then you could at least kind of cheat your way out of it, I would say, at the very least. So, it's not too bad in that respect. Tiny could be going for a move here on Ginge. He's moving to the right hand side, going down the camel straight. He's going to be later on the brakes. It's going to be Ginge by actually quite a substantial amount there. Well, when we caught that at the end of the camel straight, just peeping around the corner at the, at the uh, Lake Com chicane. He was uh, firmly in the lead again. Uh, we'll say in the lead, uh, in sixth place. Um, so a very good breaking effort from him, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I suppose it doesn't. Uh, Prof, though, after being overtaken by Lee, and 
being overtaken by Taylor McKenzie as well. He's down in 13th, just ahead of his teammate Looney Man. However, looking confident, and the rain's definitely getting lighter. I can I can say that with certainty. Yeah, you can see the the splash in front of the cars in front isn't as much now. And we're getting close to a quarter of the way through the race already. Believe it or not, it's only lap five, but the laps do, especially in the wet, actually do feel quite long, even in a well, Formula One tiny, car. Tiny making the most of that mistake that Ginge just made. And it's actually managed to get past Ginge there. You braked a bit too late going into the final chicane there. Talking about breaking a bit too late, he did it once again and almost collected Tiny in the process. But luckily, just flew right by the, uh, the rear of that Ferrari. So struggling in these conditions on the brakes. Tiny should still be quite good in these conditions. It's still damp which means the tyres aren't going to be overheating just yet. But as we as we know, as the rain is already now stopped, Lee, that this track's going to dry up in the oh. next lap or two. Uh, arguably, maybe more in the next lap because the lap is so long. Yeah, I would say it might even be better for them to just pit this lap, maybe. But then again, that could end up... There's still quite a lot of spray. But we'll see who's going to be the first one to jump in could possibly see one of the back runners doing it first I would suspect trying to possibly take advantage of a, an undercut as much as they can because this is the perfect time to do it I would say it's that sort of high risk high reward and well if you've not got nothing to lose then it's not really a risk for you but now looking at Ginge, Tiny and Chuckle there. I'm on board with Ginge here and just watching these two battle now out in front. And he's going to be a little bit happy about that. Of course, that's going to be keeping him in the game a little as well. We'll see how things are going to go. Is anybody going to pit? I don't think we will see anyone pit just yet. Oh, and Ginge actually spins a little there. And actually, Chuckle is into the pits now. He is the first one to pit. Are we going to see anyone follow suit here? Doesn't look like it up to now, Stephen. Let's see, nope. That's a little bit early, isn't it? Maybe we were a bit early to call that decision to be at the end of the lap, but... I mean, that's the thing with it being such Ooh. a big track. Oh, he's almost spun out as he exits the pits. His loony man actually spun out it. They source and then he goes into the wall and loses his front wing end plate. Oh. And that really wasn't the best decision. Needed another lap or so. He's on the hards too. I think the hards wasn't the wisest of choices is now. Oh. It twists the be... knife and gets a three second time penalty. Yep. It's the gift it keeps on giving, I suppose. But, yeah, anything could happen in this sort of sport. I'm glad it's not Christmas League, so I wouldn't want that kind of gift. <laughs> yeah, Meg, I would say that. Um, GTO now getting past Chuckle as well, and Chuckle soon to be passed, as he f feels like he's given up on the race, actually. He's lost his whole front wing now. Pitted far too early. And I think wishes he was offline and could press that flashback mode. I do love that feature, but I've noticed now I came back to try and play the game on controller and absolutely fell to tiny into the pits, though. Now, is this going to be a better one? I don't think it is just yet. No. The are still hanging over. It's I think actually this possibly not... could go into softs, maybe. Uh, he's, he's putting a new front wing on. Oh. And he's also gone the way of the hard tyre. And we know it so... is... Uh, it is lacking in grip. 
yep, I'll stay on board with him and we'll see how he is going to be able to do of course we'll have Chuckle into the pits at the end of this lap Tiny just coming out of the pits now Ah, oh, and Chuckle's retired, that's, that's unfortunate So if I were first retiree, we'll see how Tiny's going to cope with this damp conditions right now. Still seeing quite a bit of a wake of the water being flicked up from the rear of these cars. So we could suspect that it's probably going to be still quite wet and I think the Inters are still actually in a league of their own right now. I think it's actually going to take a lot longer than... Well, me anyway, what I anticipated. So, is it the right time yet? There's still spray coming off the uh, tyres of, of the drivers on slicks. And who was the other to pit on to the slick tyre there? I can't remember. Tiny, wasn't it? And how is he doing at the moment? Not brilliantly well. He's got Super Striker right on his gearbox. Yeah, but you can easily tell the grip superiority from the that enters to them hard compound tyres and it is absolutely incredible to see who's going to be able to break first and I think it may start coming into the crossover period next lap I would say maybe but again this this game never ceases to amaze me I mean this is again feeling more realistic feeling more what it would be like with taking a few laps around here with 19 cars going around the circuit to clear some of this water up it's been about three or four laps now i mean it's still arguably a little bit quick but it's much better but as soon as the sun comes out the track seems to dry up within seconds as we're seeing a fight between lee and royal rumble as DRS is now enabled. Now that seems a little bit early, seeing as the conditions are still not great. As Stinky Panda gets past Ginge at the entry to Puon Corner. And that was a great move from him. But still, Lee, from what we can see, I, I don't trust dry tyres just yet. No, I wouldn't say that they are the best tyres as of yet. I mean, Tiny is still managing to keep up with Super Striker, so maybe it is uh, starting to come into the crossover point now. As it appears, Super Striker actually going a little bit wide there as he's coming to the campus. And as they make their way through Stavolo 1 and 2, out and on towards Longchamp, we're oh, seeing pen. the top 6 7. And I think this is now the chain reaction of where everyone will come into the pits. And I don't see, think we'll have anyone trying to do some sort of overcut. But look at that. Paul Jones, they're all actually sliding out of the pit lane. And maybe they've all called this a lap early. And a little bit of me hopes they have. Um, yeah, it would be a little bit of fun, to be honest. But... Tiny actually out in the sixth. Just. And a long, long way back now. And the call to come out early is Ginge on that, in, uh, on that medium tyre overtaking Lee on the same, uh, just on the entry of Eau Rouge. And with DRS now open, and neither of them having it though. No, I didn't notice that myself, so it's a bit of a weird one, really, but hey we we'll take it as it goes, really. Sometimes these things happen, but the closest run now is Chuck on the back of that McLaren of Paul Jones in second place right now. We've got to have a look at the tyres, surely, haven't we? 
uh, Stinky Panda, the only driver on the soft tyre, and there uh, are more drivers on the hards than there are mediums, actually, and I actually think the mediums would get to the end at this point. Yeah, I would say that possibly the medium tires is the right strategy to go on. Of course, we're going to see how they're going to fare. Are they going to be able to last the length of time? Uh, 13 laps. I'm unsure. I mean, due, due, just due to the, the size of this track and, and nature, really. Just having a look, I, I know we're literally at the half point and, and we've got a way to go. This tiny sets the fastest lap and he's on the hunt for the drivers ahead of him. He's actually on uh, used or somewhat used hard tyre as Chuck gets passed down the Kemmel straight using DRS for his first, I believe, DRS overtake of the evening. As now Stephen yep. Jones gets the fastest lap and the track is really ramping up now and it will Change. be there at an almost right-angled curve of trajectory of grit. Ginge getting past Danny as Lee's caught. Yep, imagine you use that DRS to full effect there. Oh, Stephen Jones is round, coming up Brady on. Yeah, he gets overtaken by one and two, and is it going to be three? Not looking like that's the case, is GC Auto oh, is yet, yet to finish the race, and... As Lee just said there, Stephen, not looking like he's got damage. He's just done a few 180, uh, 360 spins. And lost a few places and a lot of lap time on lap 11. Yep, I would say the only thing that's damaged there is a little bit of pride there. But these things happen, unfortunately. And recently, Paul Jones still sticking right close to the back of that Williams of Chuck just ahead. Quite setting the fastest lap at 148.7. And I suspect that, just like it's happened there, the times are just going to start getting quicker and quicker for Chuck putting in a 147.950. So we could tell just by that that the gap is coming down. Sticky Panda now putting in the fastest, the 147.445. No Being surprise, on them though. Soft it was yeah. Just say that. Oh, oh Ginge. Are we going to see a 146 at the end of lap 11? I don't think we are. Super Striker, winning man. The Super Striker makes his way to the line. It's almost like a little bit of qualifying in the race, and now he doesn't take the fastest lap. Uh, nor I think any of the others will. No disrespect to them, but I don't think they'll beat that time. Potentially they will. Uh, but it's not looking like that's happened. I think everyone now on lap 12. Lee getting past Danny. And time coming down somewhat. Paul Jones, though, being the reserve. But he is uh, almost towing uh, Chuck and Pippo along. And that's what I want, Lee, because... Coix Gamer, Chuck, Pippo Kennedy, those guys are, you know, really, really in a good shot of being in the title fight. Three of the three of them, uh, all three of them are in the top four in the championship. So only eight points between uh, Pippo Kennedy and Coix Gamer uh, with Chuck in between is Royal Rumble and another which I didn't catch as we got Royal Rumble's time penalty just before. Uh, I think that might have been Taylor McKenzie. The, yeah. as they both went off at the same place one following the other's line which is a classic uh, don't as we get into the 145s now with a time of uh, time from Paul Jones and as I said that it would almost be in a pretty much was a 90 degree angle of, of the grip just shooting up on the circuit and it will get better and better just like it does in qualifying from start because we've basically got a fresh uh circuit from from the start of qualifying so chuck now getting past and yeah so it's just going to go up and up from here until the very end pretty much and as we go down the camel straight no one else within drs range danny close but i don't think close enough i think he got within one second just after the line we'll see if i was right yeah, but now he is within DRS range. He's just got to stay there for the next couple of sectors. Yep, 
Mutely. First time I've got to say that today, actually. Good. Huh? Lee? I do apologise about that, I was just in the middle of doing something there. Oh mate, I thought that was my Wi-Fi because I've just tried it today, Paul Jones getting past, so I was just trying to check <laughs> if it was me because you didn't respond. And I thought oh, I'd like fine. left the party before it told me I'd left the party or something, so thanks for that, thanks for giving me <laughs> an absolute panic attack is Paul Jones, as I said, gets passed on the Kenny straight, we've got to be better for Monday, or, or sorry, next Thursday. Or oh, Saturday, should I say, in two days when we do it again. Uh, Pippo Kennedy, very, very close to the back of Chuck. And as I said a few laps ago, Paul Jones just pulling them along and trying to catch up with Coik's Gamer. Um, maybe the medium tyre is starting to work a little later on than they expected as this track ramps up. And Chuck there definitely going off the circuit and getting himself a warning. Yep, I think the... Oh! Super Striker breaking a bit late. Uh, going down uh, just for no name. I forget the corner the name that corner is. Um, it has two names. I'm not sure which one is now the official name, but the one I've got today is Ravage. Ravage. Ah, uh, yeah. Uh, which I think yeah, is well, now the, the correct name. What was it before, do you remember? Brussels. Oh yeah, Brussels. But anyway, yeah, so uh, Super Striker just break that little bit of late and ended up going into the back of Looneyman and, and he's got some damage there on the front of the, that wing of that Red Bull. Got a little bit of came off on the end plate and that's of course going to affect the downforce quite substantially. Looking at his battle now, Chuck managing to get back past Paul Jones there. Pippo Kennedy just sitting pretty there, just watching all this unfold. And while it's all happening, they're managing to close the gap on Koyex little by little as each lap goes on. And now they can see him just in the distance 1.9 seconds the gap between Chuck and Koyex for that first place. Ginge is closing, well, it's closed it up on Tiny now. The gap is sitting. Within half a second, Super Striker into the pits now. Well, just exiting the pits now, should I say. Oh, Tiny getting a three-second time penalty. That's so, going to so bother him with Ginger right up his tail. And Lee has done the same as well. And that time again, just slightly coming down as Chuck decides to be the lead of the three drivers here. It's actually starting to work, and the time's coming down more and more. And as I yeah, said, sorry, as I said, the four, uh, sorry, now three of the top four are in the top four of the championship. Oh, but looking at it now, I, it's most likely they're going to be the straight. Each time they go down this straight appears that they're just getting a lot more speed. And look at that, Chuck's already been able to close the gap. And he's not even got any DRS, but Paul Jones has got that DRS. And we'll see what that gap's going to be down to as they're going into Lacombe. It's already down to 1.5 seconds, 1.6 seconds now. So it is coming down quite quickly. And I suspect that it could start coming in in the next lap or two. 
Ginge in time, he's swapping places there. Ginge managed to get up into sixth place now with the effect of a DRS there. He's got an 8.6 second gap to Sticky Panda just ahead, but I suspect is he still on the soft tyres? Yes, he is. So he's going to suspect he's going to be able to pull that gap in very, very shortly. But we'll see these three uh, of Paul Jones, Chuck and Pebble Kendi are actually doing quite nicely here. Not battling too much and saving it all until they get to Koyx up ahead. He's sitting at 1.5 seconds up the road now. Yeah, the time has been coming down gradually as Paul Jones decides again to take that second place spot. And through the final corner and onto lap 17, the time between first and second hasn't really changed. But it seems like these three are a little bit quicker in that middle sector where it's more technical and sector one and two is, is pretty well. Sector one has got one braking zone and then we're out of turn one and we're flat to the floor until the end of the sector as Chuck decides again to get past and Pippa Kennedy just sitting back as we see every time the top front two and it really is like a relay race, like a... Uh, you know, a bike race, a horse race, where the lead changes that uh, you know a few times, and there's always a couple that just sit back and want to pace it until we get towards the end. We see it so much with these guys now. Um, so many of them stuck around for so long, as long as we've been here, Lee, and they know each other so well now that it all becomes a little bit more of a mind game of racing. Oh. Koyak, no, that is even the playing field right up, and now Chuck is within that one second range. Well, he's teetering on the edge of it, and could he possibly end up having the DRS come the next lap? He's going to have to use a bit of his ERS in order to get that gap down, because he's going to have to do it kind of quickly, regarding uh, hard tyres will start coming into their own in the next lap or two, possibly. I see he's got within that DRS range now, coming into the final chicane. He's just got to get it nice and smooth here to get within that striking range come the end of the Kemmel Street, even. Or if he's going to play it cool and just wait nicely behind... We'll find out in just a few moments. Tiny still sticking on the back of that McLaren of Ginge for sixth place. Yeah, and here comes Chuck now down the back straight. And to the left hand side and now takes the lead of the race. And Quake's Gamer, who's led every lap up until now, loses it on the 18th of 22. But those two both having three second time penalties, so arguably have to work together to get that three second gap up and then fight between themselves for the win later on. I don't think that's going to be the case, though. Uh, but wouldn't that be interesting if that could happen for them? But yeah, well, that's Pippa the Kennedy, Kennedy. sniffing. Yes, Pippa. Oh, sorry, I was going to say, just literally about to, just taking the words out of my mouth. Pippa Kennedy now, uh, you know, smelling that blood of of the win. Yep, that is certainly looking like that. He is only 1.4 seconds back on Chuck, who's sitting in the lead right now. So by right now, taking out Paul Jones, he would end up being. Uh, the winner, technically. Yeah, so, which is very, very odd. The driver who finishes fourth would, would be winning the race, but sometimes that's just the, the way the cookie crumbles. Obviously, Paul Jones effectively isn't there at the end. He's here. Um, we hate to say it, don't we? Literally to make up the numbers, uh, but also just to, just to come along and race for the fun of it, really. That's what the reserves do. And um, They have spiced things up in the past. I mean... We were in Monza uh, not too long ago. The reserve got in the way and it cost the lead of the win. Can't remember who it was off the top of my head. Um, 
think that was on Monday. And I think, uh, I can't remember. It's really on the tip of my tongue. Anyway, Coik's game it. Now coming back at him. But really, they, they have run out of laps realistically to gain a three second margin on anyone. So it's these two really fighting for the final podium. Oh, sorry, for uh, second or third, isn't it? Um, yeah, pretty much. That, that's how it's working. They're, they're just kind of... They can't physically have their fingers crossed, but they've got their fingers crossed in, in the sense of hoping Pippo Kennedy gets a three-second time penalty because it, it's game on again. Yep, and uh, looking at this thing, is Ginge going to be able to catch Sticky Panda even? With the, him being on the soft tyres, and I think they only last about seven or eight laps here. So he's kind of went and extended it a little bit more than I would expect. And he can't pit um, now at this point, can he, really? I mean, if he does, then he's fallen down all the way to like 15th even. So it does kind of make it redundant in that sense. Um, but yeah, Ginger could actually catch up. He's already in the half a lap there. He's gained over half a second, gained six tenths, almost. So, yeah, I think that is coming down a bit quicker than expected. But, of course, Ginge has got a Ferrari right on his tail. But you could just see Sticky Panda just up the road, and you'll be able to see uh, that he's on the hard tyres as well. Uh, on the soft tyres, sorry. Unless there's a mistake from Sticky Panda here out of this corner, he's not going to have DRS down the camel straight this time around. Maybe next lap he will. With uh, how it's been playing out, that will be the case. Uh, as the soft tyres are just going to fall off a cliff up to this point, is Paul Jones now starting to uh, potentially cause a little bit of mischief as the reserve. He goes wide, though, through no name. And it loses the place to Coik's game of the that he that he lost before. Now, this is becoming a little bit more interesting. What Paul Jones is doing right now, because he really is. He he will be pulled out at the end, but he certainly can play a part when we're when we're fully in motion right now. Uh, in terms of, of losing time to these two, because Pippo Kennedy now needs to get past Paul Jones, because it's it's looking likely with the rate it's going in the last sort of 30, 40 seconds that, that these guys could maybe get that three second gap, because Paul Jones is now uh, become a bit of a, a, a an issue for Pippo, whereas before yep. he wasn't. The gap to Chuck now is 2.5 seconds. He's only got to pull about just over half a second uh, on... Uh, what do you call it? On... Pippo. Uh, Pippo, sorry. But that gap is going up and down quite quickly, so we'll have to wait and see. Of course, Chuck's managed to pull out of that DRS window from Koyex. And Koyex defending the place to Paul Jones actually and again I, I think maybe Paul Jones just had a couple of corners that was a, a little bit of an issue for him but wasn't anything more than that because he seems to be back on uh, performance And but I say that look at this is Paul Jones almost doing this on purpose I mean, the gap now is 2.9 seconds. It's coming up to th three seconds now. It's over three seconds now, so all Chuck has to do is just keep it on the straight and narrow, pretty much. Well, he, he's, al he's almost three seconds ahead of... Yeah. So, technically, right at this point, if the, if the line was around this corner, he would have won the race. As... He's over the margin of what Pippa Kennedy's going to do. We're going to try and work it out at the end. But Chuck is in a position, but I say this, Lee, go and have a look at his dash. Have a look at what uh, percentage battery he's on. He's got absolutely nothing in the tank. He used it all, hoping that Paul Jones would hold them up enough 
for him to gain time. It's very strange to see a McLaren trying to help out a Williams here. Yeah, but look, looking at it right now, Pippo Kennedy, he's going to have the DRS here. And he's got 57% in his battery, so he's just going to use all of that here, running down that camel straight. And if he could get even seven tenths of a second, then he could get this win here. He's opened up that DRS, he's using that battery, he's draining it right out. He's got within that three second window, it's 2.8, it's 2.9 now. We're going to see how things are going to go, it's over three seconds now. He's having to defend, well, battle with Koyex here, who they're going side by side with each other as they're going down into Ravage. Uh, yeah, Ravage, and Koyx Gamer not giving an inch here. He stays in third place, and he may be hoping that he can appeal <laughs> a time penalty. But at this point, I, I thought personally it was going to be a, a little bit of an undramatic finish to the uh, to the race. Uh, I thought Pippa Kennedy may have it. Not not certain, obviously, is what we're seeing now. Is He's uh, almost uh, four and a half seconds behind Chuck, who somehow in the last couple of laps has been able to put... Uh, the lap times in to gain this time as we go into Blanchemont for the final time. It's been quite undramatic up till now, but it's looking like as we go into the bus stop chicane and around the final corner for the final time at the halfway point. And it's looking like as Chuck crosses the line, we'll wait to see to confirm. We can confirm it now. Chuck wins the Belgian Grand Prix and Pippo Kennedy is going to be finishing in second and Coix Gamer finishes third. The championship fight is certainly on. And I think the lead has changed as Pippo Kennedy is now being classed as DNFing. Oh, That's gosh. made it, it made it <laughs> made it very interesting for Lee. Uh, he understandably has done that out of frustration. I can imagine he is not happy with Paul Jones in the slightest. But if I'm honest, Lee, I don't think Paul Jones has done anything wrong. Um, I wouldn't say he has or he hasn't. <clears throat> He's just been. Uh, just battling like a reserve should be, but uh, are you, are you a little bit quicker. Do you I think he's slowed up, or do you think he, or do you think he's been trying to defend a position? Because there, like you said, there is a difference. I think he was, but he was also just he could have went quicker because I did see the amount of battery he did have at one point, and. So, yeah, I'm unsure about that. But regardless, he done a great race. And I will say, Purple Kendi done a smashing race as well. I think he finished second, didn't he? I need to go and check real quick. Third, I think. Third, right, cool. Oh, jeez, it peeps. We're just, gonna, we're, just, we're just going to have to... We're just going to have to do it as is, unfortunately. Unless you want to go, no, no. I tell you what, go. Oh no, because you can't because not everyone's been. No, don't worry. Just do it as it is. I got this. Oh, okay. Take it away. And I need to load in first. For some reason, it's not letting me. Are you still stuck in a black screen? No. I am not. Oh, there we go. There we go, means just lagged right behind there. So we ended up with Chuck getting that win there and getting the top step of the podium. Paul Jones in second place, in third was Pippo Kennedy, then it was Coyotes Gamer in fourth, Ginge was in fifth, uh, Tiny finished in sixth, Sticky Panda finished in seventh, and it was Lee in eighth, Danny in ninth, Prof was in tenth, Royal Rumble finished in eleventh, then it was Looney Man in twelfth, Taylor McKenzie in thirteenth. Matt was finished in 14th. Super Striker got the fastest lap, finished in 15th. GTR was 16th and 17th was Stephen Jones 
uh, got a bit unfortunate there near the end. Dario was in uh, 18th, 19th was Perm Bowden, and Chuckle was the only retiree of the race. So that is the end of the Belgian Grand Prix. Well, thanks very much for watching. And that being the last, oh, sorry, last race of the week, just trying to find something quickly. Uh, yeah, the next time we'll be back will be on Monday, and that will be with Lee. As I said, he's taken over for the, the majority of the last part of the season. And I can't find, bear with me, I've got it. Uh, it's got to be Austria, isn't it? Or we just had that? Uh, well, it's Spain next week. No, it's on Monday. It's France. Oh, on Monday. It? Yeah, it's France. I remember that one. Okay, Not yeah. So you'll be back. You'll be back with me in France on Monday. And then we'll be back for Burt River Racing again with me after they took over last week. Oh, this week, sorry. Um, and then again, we'll be back with us on Thursday with me and Lee for this great championship fight that's starting to happen into the uh, downhill of the season. Um, and we'll be at Spain for that one, which has turned out to be a much better race with the changes now. So looking forward to that one next week. Uh, until next time, though, it's goodbye from me and from Lee. Peace out.